Leatherman has released a new Leatherman Arc Obsidian. It is $275. What do you guys think? Is this a huge mistake or actually a good move by Leatherman? Now, the new Leatherman Arc Obsidian will have the tool set as a Leatherman Arc because it is a Leatherman Arc. So you will still have the bit driver, you'll have the can opener, you'll have the saw, you'll have the Magna Cut knife blade, you'll have the pair of scissors, you'll have the awl, you'll have the micro driver, the flat screwdriver, and the double-sided file. And the file cutting teeth on the bottom with, again, the pocket clip and the hammer cutting service on the end also, of course, the pliers with the replaceable wire cutters and the crimpers. So that all stays the same. That's not going to change. But what changes on the Leatherman Obsidian? Well, that's a good question. Now, there are four camps of people that I think will react to this tool. Now, the first camp or group of people, perhaps we should call them, will think this is fantastic. We'll call this the Leatherman fan group. Anytime that Leatherman does anything, there are people that are essentially like those who love Apple products and the smallest change will excite them. So for the Leatherman fan group, this will be a great deal. They won't care that it's $275. That won't seem to be anything at all. Now on DLT's website, they have listed the Arc Obsidian stands out with its sleek matte black PVD coated handles and champagne DLC coated components offering superior corrosion protection and a striking aesthetic. So I did read some people said, hey, the world is falling apart. I want the best multi-tool available. This seems like it's even better than the Leatherman Arc. It's got a little bit extra coating, 300 bucks, who cares? That will be your Leatherman fan group. Now on the opposite end of the spectrum are those who hate every time Leatherman adds a color to their tools. I think that is the biggest majority that is most vocal whenever Leatherman does this. So that group, some of them will say, hey, I'll just buy this Rock Tool Gen R with a VG10 blade. I'll have the titanium, almost like painted handles. That's good enough for me for $50. I can save $250 off the Leatherman Arc Special Edition, you know, almost. That is the way to go. So I think that's a big group as well. Some people are really into that. They're not, they just don't want to buy all these premium limited edition multi-tools. Now, somewhere in the middle is another group of people that will say, hey, well, I like that Leatherman brought it out. I can't really afford it right now. Maybe I'll buy it later. We'll see what happens. I think that's another group of people that maybe are just putting this in their shopping cart. They're adding it to their Christmas list. It's not... They're not super excited about it, but it's something that they want down the road. And then I think there's another group of people that might be one-time multi-tool buyers. So maybe they'll see this Leatherman Obsidian. That might be the only multi-tool they ever buy. Almost like a midlife crisis, people buy a Mercedes-Benz convertible. Who knows? They might go out spend the money, buy it, put it in a drawer, never bring it out again. So I think there are a couple groups that will look at this extremely differently. Now, one of the things I want to mention with the Leatherman Arc Obsidian is that if you were to go to Rip's Garage, get the fabric tape skins to put on your Leatherman Arc, they are about $20 a set. So let's say you got two sets. Maybe you wanted to change it up, put black on, then take it off. Or maybe you have two Leatherman Arcs, put a tan on. I don't know. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is you would spend the same amount, essentially, for two sets of aftermarket skins for your Leatherman Arc as you would for this new Leatherman Arc Obsidian if you don't have the Leatherman Arc already. So it's only about a $50 increase. Yes, is that too much? Probably, but considering all the aftermarket parts I buy for my Leathermans, it's not really that huge a deal and Leatherman could have charged a lot more. Something to consider. 
Now, when you go to Leatherman's website and search for the Leatherman Arc, what do you get with your new limited edition? Well, one of the first things I notice is you get, it looks like a single layer bit kit. Now, th this is really frustrating to me to some extent because next tool can sell their bit kit on Amazon for $13. It's not, it's not a huge investment. They're still trying to make money off of it. And a Leatherman for this very expensive limited edition tool only gives you, it looks like half of a bit kit, but we'll leave that there. I'll let you guys think about that. I find that really frustrating. Now, as we move on, they do have a black, looks like leather pouch with that. Maybe it's a little different. Well, it is different than what comes with the normal Leatherman Arc because the normal Leatherman Arc comes with your nylon Leatherman pouch. So you do have the black Leatherman pouch as well. That's nice, I guess. I mean, it's a very expensive tool. I would hope they would do something. And then it does look like you get a slightly different colored Leatherman box instead of your black and bright yellow. It almost looks like you get a black and a Leatherman gold. So there are some differences to set this apart. Some of you will say they're very minor. I agree with you. I agree. But there are some differences. And for collectors, that will definitely make them happy that there are at least those differences. So I think some of you may be asking yourself, why does Leatherman do this? Why does Leatherman keep releasing these tools, adding colors to them? Why isn't there a lot more tools being released? Why do we just have color changes? Why Leatherman? Why, why, why? Well, I think Leatherman is really having an issue with number one, I think the Chinese uh, tool manufacturing is becoming so good that Leatherman is really struggling with the competition. I think that's a factor. So Leatherman is definitely trying to stay competitive in the sense they're trying to raise enough capital, uh, stay in business. So I think things like changing colors do raise revenue as much as people hate it. There are always Leatherman fan groups who are out there uh, buying this. So I think that's one of the issues. I think the second issue is because Leatherman may be almost following the automotive manufacturing process. I'm just trying to figure out what Leatherman's doing. I have no clue, but I do know that, for instance, when Leatherman releases, or not Leatherman, but when Ford would release a Ford Explorer, a brand new product comes out you know, as an automaker, you don't make a new car or new vehicle. You don't redesign it every year. It stays in production, but to keep up the excitement, they'll upgrade the package, they'll upgrade the colors, there'll be new wheels maybe uh, coming out, you know, something to make it new. So it does seem like perhaps Leatherman is adopting the strategy. Is it effective? I don't know. But I do know that I did see on Le on uh, Reddit, actually, someone saying, please, Leatherman, make the Ark in black. Well, Leatherman is. So there is a, a group of some of you that probably will really enjoy this, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But that does seem to be the road that Leatherman is going. So even if they do release a new tool this year or next year, I would expect to see the same treatment from it brand new tool set, a big hype, and then several months later, maybe a year later, a color change to sort of rekindle the interest in that tool. That seems to be Leatherman's direction. Maybe they're going to head for every two years releasing a tool, every year and a half, who knows, but I'm guessing it might be a little bit till we see our next one, but we can always hope that Leatherman will release another one soon.